uh, in, in essence, the, the project was much more about uh, the, let's say, the, how should I say this in a decent way? Well, actually, how they fucked up the whole process. Uh, it's very decent. Yes. So, <laughs> um, so I think it's also, it's a, it's a critique on, the, on our um, justice system in Belgium. I don't know if, if anyone of you is following like the current events with uh, Abdeslam, uh, who might you know get released because of a language mistake. Oh, yes, yeah, so, so it's yeah. very impossible to. No one else will understand this, but it's a similar thing that happened in this case, like where you know you have Dutch and French, and and some of the pieces uh, need to be needed to be translated. So it, you know they wasted a lot of time on the investigation uh, just because of. Yeah, simple language issues. That's yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, keep it at that. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. But uh, anyway, after that project, you you continued, of course, with different other uh, projects, uh, even more conceptual, I would say. You're making installations and uh, working on the base of facts and, and the historical images, historical facts, but then creating a story which is still to do with this idea of confabulation, the construction mm -hmm. of reconstruction of memory and filling in the gaps in a way. Um, but now, I mean, the, the change between then, which is uh, when was Belgian autumn, was five, six years ago? 2000. Um, long I don't know the date. Anyway, was but, but recently we have, we have this, this, like, this whole concept of fake truth, you know, and, and we don't know anymore where we are. We are discussing all the time, is it true or not, does it matter? And as an artist who is working and studying this idea of where truth ends and where fake begins, etc. And what is, what is this gap? What does it do with us? What does it do with our perception history? Are you not lost completely in this? Um, or can you maybe you can lost help in us? Which yeah. way? No, I, I don't know. There's this whole discussion about what is true and what is fake and what does it matter? I, it matters. I mean, I think it, it still matters, uh, but it matters for everyone in different degrees. Um, and I think it's, in a way it's all about transparency. I mean, of course, if you say something is the truth and you know that it's not, that's something quite different. Um, I mean, in, within confabulation, for example, it's something you do unwillingly. Um, you're, a lot of times you're not aware of it. Um, you're not aware of what? Uh, that, that, that what you're saying is not the truth. Um, it's not a lie, because a lie is intentional, um, but it's, you're not aware of the fact that you're uh, kind of bending the truth um, or filling in gaps, because it's actually a term that comes from people who suffer from uh, dementia, um, and then a specific form of dementia. Um, so, but but I guess for example in the media I think it's it's a bit different it's it's much trickier uh, and I think yeah with the Trump administration it's incredible the amount of shit they pour over us every day it's you know it's it's, it's crazy and and I think what they do well in a way uh, I don't defend them but it's they always. Um, surpass the a lie with a bigger with a bigger one. Yeah. You know, every time it's you know you think okay this is no this must be the end, but they always come up with something something new. And there's, there's this idea, there's this notion that this is possible at all. Does it change your way of working or your thinking about what you can do as an artist? Um, I don't know. I, it, it for me it's, it's quite depressing that um, to to be honest. Um, that, that this is, I mean, as an artist, it's, it, I think it's different, you know, yeah, there is always a lot of possibilities, but when it comes to politics or, let's say, journalism, I think there is some boundaries, uh, even for me, I think there are some, some boundaries, you know, in terms of respecting, um, maybe not necessarily truth, but um, I think it's more integrity, I think. It's with a story. I mean, you, you can tell a story not in, in the way that it's 100% accurate, um, but as long as you tell it in, in a way that the story, that you keep the integrity of the story, that's something else. Um, but you have to be transparent about it. Uh, and, and I think that's, that's the most important thing. Right. Yeah. But that's from an, let's say, artistic point of view. 
And talking about stories, I remember you, uh, you did a project not so long ago about the reconstruction of, uh, of history also, colonial history is something that we uh, talk a lot about nowadays, about um, our colonial history and how the, the representation of that is, is, should change. Uh, we should forget certain famous figures and uh, move, and mayor, move the, 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 all, the, all the statues in the streets, etc. Et and you've been working on, uh, maybe you can say something about it, you, you've been working on, the, on Tintin, on Kafia. Yes. Um, Kafia in Congo. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so it, Tintin, I think it will come. No. Yeah, it's a bit slow, but uh, anyway, later. Um, so I, I just see it. Okay. Um, so it's Tintin. Um, it's well, it, it was the second album uh, from Tintin, originally published in a newspaper, um, and the first version in the early '30s. There was a passage in, in somewhere in the middle of the book where Tintin said. Uh, he was standing in front of a class of black Congolese uh, children and he said, I'm going to talk, uh, talk to you about your uh, father country, your fatherland, um, which was, even for that time, it was a, like even a step too far. Uh, I mean, Tintin is relatively racist, um, or actually quite racist, <laughs> uh, the superiority is just, uh, you know, it's incredible. Just looking at the, ex at the exhibition yeah. here. So, yeah, this is the exhibition. Um, or this was the exhibition in Amsterdam. Um, but basically, so what I did was, I was interested in, in the, the stereotype um, of, of how uh, Congolese, um, uh, black Congolese uh, people were portrayed. Um, so what what we did is that there was an uh, I just I bought an original uh, one because after the one in 33 they made a second version and they changed this passage um, instead of having Belgium on the blackboard they just said okay today I'm going to teach you mathematics one plus one is two so it was a little bit yeah it was a little bit more uh, subtle uh, they were still uh, stupid but okay you know so it was more acceptable um, so what I did is I was interested in the stereotype um, so uh, then by hand um, we sand, just sanded away all the images <coughs> sorry all the images that uh, don't um, contain any uh, black people. So what happens is you get you get uh, uh, a comic. So you see all the the stuff that is sanded away. There was images without any black people. So what happens is you you get um, let's say a polaroid a polarized version of um, like an even more polarized version of of uh, our colonial view or at least Hergé's colonial view, but I think there was a few at that time. It was quite common to think that uh, people from Congo, especially the black ones, were stupid. Um, but in Kafin it was even worse because the dog of Kafin, I think his name is Bobby. Bobby. Bobby, you know, he speaks or he barks excellent French and all the black people, they speak horrible French with mistakes. So, um, you know, so this superiority it's, it's really entrenched and like really embedded in the whole story. Um, so that's it, and it's not photography, but it's still. Uh, yeah, but it's, what's also interesting is, of course, that you show that in different times of history there are different, yeah. different kinds of truth. Yes. Well, uh, the thing is, I mean, uh, of course, uh, as a photographer, maybe people say oh, it's, it's strange that you use comics. But um, for me, what, what I think is interesting is uh, that it's about image creation uh, and imagery. And it starts with education. So you have school books, uh, Tintin, was, in a way it's also part of, let's say, our education. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, so I thought it was important also to use these uh, kind of sources. Uh, so the beginning of our, let's say, visual uh, literature, like mm -hmm. visual uh, culture. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. so is this also visual culture, what we see here? Uh, yeah, oh, it's, it's a completely different project. But, um, yeah, so this is also visual culture, but this is digital, visual, visual culture. So what's happening here? Um, Oh, that's interesting. It's a glitch. 
Um, anyways, but the previous image is also a glitch, but it's an intentional one. Uh, this one just, I, it's actually quite cool, I think. Yeah, it's nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, well, normally there's no white. So, okay, so this is, um, I, I was working on uh, thinking about what, what happens if um, our iconic images, uh, you know, the, the ones from, let's say, the more present times, um, where more and more images are shot on uh, digital media. Uh, there was an article uh, saying, stating, I think it was Reuters, uh, that they said, yeah, from now on, we're, you know, we don't want photographers to shoot raw anymore because they have more possibilities of uh, faking images. Um, this was one reason, but I think the main reason for them was an economic reason because it's much cheaper to store uh, JPEGs, which is a lower quality images and, and more compressed. And raw for And raw, yes, and raw images. It's like a negative. Imagine that, you know, you have, you have a negative so you can copy it and, and manipulate it a little bit. With a JPEG image, it's like when you have a, a cheap camera or like a digital camera um, and you say, oh, I have a four gigabyte card and I want to make 2,000 pictures, you can do it on a low resolution JPEG and you can make a lot of images. But the quality is quite low. So if you copy these things over and over, the, the quality degrades. Um, and I was also interested in, in not only um, it's, it's a bit complicated to tell it in this uh, short amount of time, but <coughs> basically what I wanted to do is to think what would happen if the iconic images from, let's say, uh, the, the 21st century Activity. were reduced. Yeah, so for example, you, you had the... Um, girl, saw, yeah, that was some, something else, but for example, the one with the color blocks, the black one was uh, ISIS. So what I did is I, I um, did a search, uh, um, yeah, I see. So, um, so these are images that are captured before the image comes up on your screen. Um, so if you have slow internet connection, you see this sometimes, you know that it's still loading. Um, and then you just have a sliver of the image, um, and some of them are so iconic, for example, the beheading of James Foley, you know, <coughs> the orange, he was wearing this orange uh, suit, jumpsuit. Yeah, this, this one. Uh. So I was interested in, to, in seeing, okay, do you still, do you need to see the image in order to recognize it, what it is when you see this? Um, do you, can you bring the image back if you've seen it? Uh, so it's more like, let's say, an exercise. Uh, um, a mental uh, exercise. Yeah, they're quite, <coughs> in the exhibition, they're quite large works, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah so relatively large. <coughs> but people could think they're just abstract art. Yeah, well, there was some, it was interesting, there were some discussions um, about people saying, yeah, is this something that you would hang in your living room, even though it can be beautiful, but it's, if you know the content, it's actually quite uh, repulsive. Confronting, yes. Um, and for me, I mean, that's a difficult question to answer. I would say, why not? Um, but uh, because it's something we you get confronted with it every day, which doesn't mean that you have to hang it on your wall. But still, you know, it's it's something that you know, it's it's there. It's present. It's ever present. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's a sign they can, you can raise the water. Yeah. <laughs> but just, just to finish off, is, yes. does it mean that uh, the completely, almost completely abstract image, does that come, which is hiding a real image, a real situation behind that, some, somehow comes close to a certain truth for you? Um, because it can't be just a visual, nice no, thing to look at. That's no, but the thing is, in a way, it, it is a true image. Um, the only thing is that it's generated by a computer before the, the, let's say, the actual images get uploaded. But it's not a lie, uh, this, this image. Um, and at the same time, for me, it was also more an exercise in seeing what happens if images decay. Um, it, I mean, in the exhibitions, I also did it in a, um, an analog way by printing images and then uh, not fixing them. 
<laughs> where they disappear. Yes, so every time the, the viewer would open a box, you know, there would light fall on the picture and it would degrade over time. Uh, and then there was some other images where there was a big plexi, red plexi, so you imitate the light of the dark room. Mm -hmm. uh, so you actually slow down the, the process. Um, so for me, that's, that's more, it's much more like an, an exercise or a thinking exercise okay. uh, rather than a statement. Okay. Well, we have to end. You're not showing any work here on the Daily Plan, but you are showing some work at Raverstein at the Art Rotterdam Fair. Yeah, Tintin, you? actually. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. a project. Any other places where we should go and see your work? Oh, yeah. Um, so for couples, uh, on the, the 14th, of course, it's Valentine's Day. Um, so currently at the um, Strom uh, in The Hague, which is next to the, the Palais Turn. Um, the, it's the last week of the um, third block of Backup, uh, an exhibition, and it's uh, mostly focused on, let's say, the execution of uh, the Ceausescu's. Yeah. So that's why I, I think the link with Valentine is perfect, because they died together. Um, <laughs> and they were still very much in love when they got executed. So, um, yeah, okay. so strong. Perfect, romantic. One more week. Romantic rendezvous. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.